So the Final Fantasy 16 Dominance trailer just dropped and it looks incredible. The visuals look amazing, the combat looks so good, um, so I just want to take a few minutes to talk about it. I will say first off that I do not have any experience with DMC combat and I know that the director of combat for DMC5 is heading up this project. Obviously there will probably be some mechanics that I theorize to talk about that may be way off or are, you know, common knowledge for people that have played those games. Feel free to correct me or clarify things in the comments below since I'm pretty sure I'll miss something. If you don't know me, hi, I'm Byroxis. I love to slow down games to really show off their animations. I want to give some appreciation to an integral part of a game that, in my opinion, doesn't get that much love. So these videos look to um, break down the animations as well as, you know, theorize a bit about how combat's gonna work. Anyways, I don't want to waste your time, so let's look at the first shots of combat. First up is this boss battle kind of fight to start us off with some really cinematic shots. There are some pretty notable cuts here where Clive's sword is behind him at the end of this first clash, but then it's seen blocking the enemy's lance in the next. I imagine we missed some kind of quick time event or some kind of counter, since Clive is seen then pushing the enemy backwards with some of his own attacks. Even the counter though has a cut during the attacks where Clive is seen doing two handed strikes, but then the next scene shows Clive doing a one handed strike. I imagine they wanted the combat that people would first see in this trailer to be snappy, which is why they cut up this clash between the two. Not too much to point out here, but I did think the cuts were important to note. Also these perks up here I'll talk about later. The next scene shows us our first look at some of the normal combat with a HUD and all. I love this side area showing some of the things that you're doing, and I know it's a system using DMC. The first thing we see is a precision dodge, and we can actually see an after image of Clive here that slowly disappears as he counters into a burst shot. The blue glow around him looks so great, and I imagine it's to signify that you've dodged, and the glow is the window of time you have to counter. Also, this counter looks so powerful with the screen shake and the burst of light with the slosh. The burst shot that seems to be a quick insert attack to transition between combos is so smooth. I love how I can hardly even tell the cuts between the animations of these attacks. It gives this incredible flow to the fighting and just feels really, really good. This burst shot and the following lunge show off Clive's Phoenix abilities coming through, with the orange fire kind of being part of the attacks. Before we go to the next scene, I do want to point out some things on the HUD. In the bottom left, we have our support abilities with potions and tonics to heal or boost certain stats. This doesn't need much explanation, obviously, but I do like the quick access to multiple forms of healing and buffing. With this game being so fast-paced, having to go through a menu to heal would pull you out of that combat flow and be hard to manage. In the top left, we have your HP as well as this set of perks, so 5 slots, maybe more, to boost different abilities or stats. I mentioned this boosts strength, this one is probably to speed you up or maybe affects your dodge ability. This one probably lessens recast timers on your icon or special abilities. This one boosts potency of your potions and tonics, and I'm not sure what this last one refers to. Maybe it has something to do with boosting icon strength, or we'll have some kind of familiar system maybe. Let me know your thoughts down below. Lastly, let's look at the bottom right. We have attack, jump, fire, and phoenix shift. These are most likely mapped to your X square, circle, and triangle buttons. Holding R2 I believe will bring up this set of options, which we see in the next scene. This changes your square and triangle options to Rising Flames and Scarlet Cyclone. Rising Flames is used and seems to be a launching attack. This gives you an icon strike bonus and there is something called a will break that happens. We see this special or encircle on this enemy which may be an indicator that they are open to a strong attack. Or that like, you know, hitting them is going to create an opening. This attack looks incredible. I know I keep using that word, but the visuals are just phenomenal in this trailer. The phoenix wing forming around Clive's arm as he punches the enemy into the air just Ugh, it looks so cool! This next scene shows us some Garuda combat. This changes your magic to arrow, of course, and the icon ability is called Deadly Embrace, which we actually get a look at here. You can see Clive grab the closest enemy and pull him closer as he rises into the air. We then see the ability Wicked Wheel used, which summons two claws that deal multiple spinning strikes. The transition to a new icon is so smooth. Before the Wicked Wheel attack is even done, you can see the switch in the top left corner. The abilities change to Wind Up and Upheaval, though Wind Up is grayed out, most likely meaning it is a ground-only ability. Clive uses Upheaval which summons a Titan arm that he uses to punch the ground. It's a pretty impressive area effect and the damage is pretty impressive as well, taking off almost half of some of the enemy's HP. Next up we have a new set of icons on our HUD, Odin, Shiva, and Ramu. Odin has this gauge on screen when he is being used that slowly builds during combat. The element is Dark for the magic and Arm of Darkness is the icon ability. The R2 attacks are Gungner, which I probably pronounced horribly wrong, <laughs> and Heaven's Cloud. Instead of a precision counter like we saw in the first scene, we get a takedown due to the enemy's stagger gauge depleting. Clive uses an R2 ability summoning a Dark Lance to deal multiple spinning strikes. At first I was a little worried seeing such a long attack happening, but it looks like the button's being mashed here so you might be able to control how long you attack for which is nice. It seems like this ability in particular is to spam openings or staggers. Next we get a look at Shiva's Diamond Dust ability. I'm not sure where this ability comes from, it could be this limit gauge looking thing right below the health bar, but it doesn't go down after the attack. 
It could be the Cold Snap Icon ability, but before we saw Garita's attack actually put the name up on the bonus side, so I don't really think it's Cold Snap either. Anyways, we then see an R2 ability, Thunderstorm used. Next up we see another precision dodge against the enemy since we see the after image in front of Clive. We then get an iconic strike, meaning we used one of the R2 abilities. This seems similar to Wicked Wheel, but only having one Garuda Claw during the spinning attack either means this changes according to being on the ground of the air, it being a different ability like maybe the Gouge R2 ability we saw before, or a new ability we haven't seen since I imagine we'll be able to trade out abilities as we level up. The last idea I have is that there are specific changes to abilities when you counter. I am kind of prone to think we'll get special changes to our abilities with countering since we did get a special kind of counter bonus against this enemy. This is incredibly fast, but we can see that the claw is actually formed by his foot as he is doing spinning kicks against the enemy. Also this like twirl spin out of the attack looks mm, Just all the animations, just they all smoothly transition one into the other which just looks so good. Before this next attack we can see Deadly embraces them being selected as we can see that the button or icon is being mashed in the corner. We also see that the takedown is indeed connected with this orange circle that appears around enemies. So there's going to be benefits that you receive in combat if you keep your awareness up and don't just button mash. During this pull we see the green effect on Clive's arm, but when he switches to Phoenix min animation, the effect actually changes to orange. This is going to look so cool as we switch between icons. Like I just imagine high level players constantly switching between icons and just the colors on screen are just going to be so cool. Uh, right before the scene ends we do see Shift Strike, which I assume is the Phoenix Shift ability. Having an ability straight out the gate to quickly teleport to an enemy is so useful. The rest of the combat is really just the giant boss fights we'll be encountering throughout the game. I imagine we will fight the enemies Clive for a kind of first phase before we transform into these giant icons for the final phase. This fight with the Phoenix and Ifrit is insane. The Hellfire attack takes almost your entire health bar away. I imagine this is scripted since this is like probably the first part of the game, but I would still be panicking nonetheless seeing 95% of my health bar just gone. <laughs> We then get to see Ifrit versus some of the other icons, as well as this mysterious one. I'm sure people already know who this is, so let me know in the comments. There's one part where it looks like we are fighting Shiva, but it actually seems like we summoned her to attack this liquid flame. All these icons look incredible. They all look unique and terrifying. <laughs> one last note is I really hope we get to tame or tap into Bahamut's power. Seeing as we've been able to kind of take other icons' power, I assume we will, but oh, that's gonna be so cool. You can tell I'm really excited for this game. It looks like it's going to be an amazing blend of cinematic flashy combat, but still keeping it incredibly snappy. It's not an easy thing to do. Usually flashy attacks come at that price of utility, but I don't think that's going to be the case of this game. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other content on Final Fantasy or Kingdom Hearts. I love these two franchises, and I've done some really deep dives into the combat and animations for them. I also stream on Twitch every once in a while, so head on over there if you want to see that. Also, uh, I'm so sorry for the lack of content lately, really trying to get back on the grind. I do have um, some ideas and stuff that I want to get out soon. Just, uh, yeah, just busy with life. So uh, yeah, I appreciate the patience and see you soon. Subscribe or share this video and I'll see you in the next one. It won't be a month before the next video, I swear. <laughs>